This is GTV, a land of a thousand tastes. One day, many, many years ago, a young boy was out on an adventure, just traveling around to see what he could see, when he came across Peach's castle, where Princess Peach, Mario, and Luigi were having a fun time together outside in the courtyard. The young boy took one look at the princess and immediately fell in love with her. After all, who wouldn't? But how could the princess love me as much as these two fellas, he wondered. Then he overheard the name of the one in red, Mario. Well, if he's Mario, then I'll become Wario, with a W. It's just like Mario, and so the princess will have to love me too, he thinks. He continues to overhear the conversation. What are you doing today? The princess asks the brothers. Playing with my Dr. Mario playset and this water game, says Mario and his brother Luigi. Oh, such children, says the princess. Well, this story was a long time ago. The Mario brothers mull the situation over. She likes more mature guys, doesn't she? Yeah, fellas, that is what the ladies like. So get a clue and man yourself up. Well, Mario and Luigi learn this right quick and even sport mustaches to show how grown up they've become. The princess approves. Wario does the hardest thing a guy can do walk up cold and introduce himself to Peach. She is rather taken by his handsome looks. Wario invites Peach on a tour of his kingdom. The brothers tell Wario to go pound sand, adding that no one has ever heard of him. Peach urges them all not to fight, inviting everyone to travel together. The group sets out, crossing a bridge to the nearest island. When everyone reaches the other side, Wario takes out a hatchet and cuts the bridge out from underneath. Wario laughs as he says, when he means his kingdom, he means he's taking over right here. Because wherever Wario goes is Wario's kingdom. Welcome to Wario Land. Wario then takes two leaves to form a mustache of his own. He takes hold of the princess and sends Mario and Luigi flying. The princess begs for the fighting to stop, saying that Mario and Luigi aren't used to being bullied in such a way. This statement makes the boys run away in shame and embarrassment. Wario gets the easy win. Far away, Mario and Luigi still run for their lives until they trip over and fall face first in front of what looks like a talking mushroom. The old man insists that he is not a mushroom, but a mountain hermit, and that the many years he had spent living alone in nature has made him one of the strongest, toughest men in the world. Strong? Can you help us be strong like you? Says Mario. The hermit mulls this request over and realizing he is fresh out of food to eat, tells the boys that they are in luck and offers to train them. The first step, climb that high mountain peak right over there and pick the biggest mushroom on the top. Meanwhile, Wario has taken Peach back with him and being the good woman that she is, offers to make him something to eat. However, he rejects the dinner outright. She did the best she could with what little was laying around. The princess leaves the house in shame. Back on the mountain, Mario and Luigi reach the top and see a huge, juicy mushroom. It's just within reach when Luigi pulls a rock apart from the mountainside and starts to slip down. Mario is faced with a massive dilemma. Procure the mushroom to complete the training exercise or save his brother. What will he do? The old man thanks Mario for bringing him the mushroom, but our hero questions if it was all worth it. I mean, he did lose his own brother after all. Well, despite all that, he was rather hungry, so Mario took a bite of the mushroom and it perked him right up. With a burst of energy, he runs out, with Luigi or not, to rescue Peach. Our hero comes across Wario and demands to know where the princess is. Well, hmm. It looks like she may have committed one of Japan's oldest and most popular traditions, as evidenced by leaving her crown and shoes on the cliffside. Mario is visibly upset because, after all, if Wario hadn't stuck his big, ugly red nose into his business, 
None of this would have ever happened. The two start fighting. Mario takes the first swing, but Mario ducks out of the way. He stands up and delivers one uppercut that sends Wario flying, all thanks to the mushroom. The bad guy learned his lesson, but it is hard to call this a victory as Mario stands all alone. Just then, Luigi is spotted off in the horizon. He's alive, and Peach is too, hiding out in a coconut tree. Speaking of Wario, as he finally comes to, he wonders if mushrooms would give him the same powers. He picks one up and tries it. Yeah, you gotta check if they're not poisonous first. So, that was how Mario met Wario, all those years ago. And since then, Mario, Luigi, and Peach have had all kinds of adventures together. From time to time, they would cross paths with Princess Daisy, who always had a thing for Mario. While the two princesses never saw eye to eye, they would always put these things aside to save the day when needed. Old Wario came back a second time, taking over Mario's castle. The brothers, Peach, Daisy, Yoshi, and a few other friends joined forces. And we all know how that turned out. After years of service, Mario and Luigi were notified that the Mushroom Kingdom would officially recognize their heroics by commissioning a solid gold statue of their likeness, christened by Princess Peach herself. What a great surprise! Though somehow the telegram came late. The unveiling is today! The two brothers get dressed and head over to the ceremony. Fashionably late, Peach scolds them before handing over the scissors to free the tarp and unveil the statue. With a snip, the covering falls away. What? A pile of rocks? Where's the statue? It's been stolen. Who is behind this? The thieves load the golden statue onto a big ship and set sail. As Mario, Luigi, and Peach watch the ship disappear over the horizon, the thieves announce that they are known as the Brown Sugar Pirates, who love to steal valuable things. Our heroes are left wondering, how will we get the statue back? Just then, an unlikely friend appears, Wario, with his own boat that he offers to lend out in order to rescue the golden statue. Mario says no, Wario cannot be trusted. Don't go, Peach. But really, the only two options are to get in the boat or let the golden statue disappear forever. All four get on board. Wario protects Peach and her honor while Mario and Luigi paddle. Ain't that always the way. The boat must have a built-in B button or something because before you know it, the boat catches up to the pirate ship. In fact, the boat is going too fast. It can't slow down in time, crashing into the pirate ship. The current drags down Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Wario. It looks like this adventure is over before it really began. But old Wario finds a beautiful mermaid who gives him some aid. It may just be the seawater and the lack of O2, but she does kind of look like Princess Daisy, even though the mermaid swears that isn't her name. The undersea fairy remarks about how in these lands there are many magic pots that can be helpful in the future. Wario only wants to know if any of the pots will make him rich. Was it all real or just a dream? The group finds themselves on a place called Kitchen Island, where the brown sugar pirates call home. All kinds of bad guys guard the coast, known as Rice Beach. The first round are some Togemarus and pirate goons. These can easily be taken care of with barrels. Moving inland, Pencoons guard the cave with weapons in hand. Peach has the right idea, but eventually her makeshift defense plan falls apart. Eventually, a spiked Koopa named Togibros, the boss of this area, shows up to put an end to our friends and their plans. The spiky turtle hides in his shell and begins to spin, attacking Luigi head on, Gamera style. While the fight goes on, and not in the good guy's favor, Wario sees a shiny object off in the dark distance. He sneaks away. The shiny light looks like it just might be a magic pot that the mermaid, who looked like Daisy, was talking about. I mean, just imagine if Wario could power up. He could bust out of here pretty easily and then went over Daisy. Uh, I mean the mermaid. He could also find the statue and then sell it and become super rich. In the dark, it's hard to tell what's real and what isn't. 
but the pot does give Wario the courage to run back and rescue Mario, Luigi, and Peach from danger. One punch to the gut makes the boss explode, leaving behind a big reward of gold coins. The princess starts to question if Wario really isn't such a bad guy after all. Maybe he's just been misunderstood this whole time. She offers to stitch up his clothes after the battle. Of course, to finish the job, she's going to need the clothes he's got on right now as well. Mario is none too happy about this. And hey, who wouldn't be? I mean, nobody likes to get blocked like this, if you know what I mean. Could Wario really steal Peach away? He wonders. Though I'll remind you, there's nothing going on between Peach and Mario anyway. Sorry, Mario, you should have said something when you had the chance, and you've had a lot of them. The coins procured from the boss battle come in handy, because to open the gates ahead costs a bundle. Since when were coins required to pass to the next level? I thought they were just used to get extra lives. What's next? Doors that won't open till you have a certain number of stars or something? As the doors open and the team moves through, Wario constantly tries to get the best of Mario by flexing right in front of Peach, which she just can't resist. We've all been there, right guys? All the fun times Mario and Peach have had together. She's gonna throw it all away for this stupid lug? Mario just can't take it anymore and makes a break for it. If she wants Wario that bad, she can have him. The poor guy heads out to the nearest hole and falls right into Asparagus Lake. Wario and Peach move on. In the lake, Mario asks some of the local pinwheels if they've seen any pirates nearby. Without hesitation, they all attack Mario immediately. I guess we know whose side these guys are on. In the middle of all the fighting, Mario spots a familiar face. Could it be? Yoshi! He must have tunneled from the other side of the world to get here. Mario asks Yoshi for help. The green dinosaur turns into a wearable helmet that Mario can use to blast anything that stands in the way. Our hero makes it out of the lake and with a renewed vigor goes looking for Peach and the statue as well. As Mario surfaces, he's lucky enough to find the princess right there, in the boat with Wario, who has a similar yet more powerful helmet. Doh! What's that? says Wario. A Yoshi? Well, that's nothing compared to my dragon. Way to rub salt in the wound. Peach is happy to see Mario, though. It won't be long now until we head out to Mount Teapot, she says. Yes, she may be wooed by Wario for the time being anyway, but the princess hasn't forgotten the mission to retrieve the golden statue of Mario and Luigi, stolen by the brown sugar pirates. Say, where is Luigi anyway? Ah, he's still passed out in the cave from the last battle. Finally coming to, he sees a little Kuri Kuri who has been taking care of the green guy this whole time. She kind of likes Luigi and he gives her a ribbon as a way of saying thanks. It makes Kuri-chan extra cute. In the chamber, Luigi finds a Gao Gao in the cave who's begging for help to escape this dangerous area. Luigi doesn't trust him. The toothy animal swears the caves are filled with Koopas who are at odds with the locals that are certainly not reptilian. An escape is promised, but to be safe, Luigi ties him up. So, how do we get out of here? Luigi asks. Oh. Meanwhile, back at Mount Teapot, Mario and Wario are racing each other to the top. It's funny what a woman will make a man do. As they scale upwards, Peach promises a hearty dinner of asparagus for them when it's all over. Wario takes the lead and pulls all sorts of dirty tricks to keep Mario from catching up. The mountain is guarded by all kinds of peccans and chicken ducks who do their best to defend the mountain. The helmets Mario and Wario brought along do help, though maybe not as well as they had hoped. Wario makes it to the top and celebrates. Up in the sky, a minotaur named Beefun, the boss of the mountain, comes down to the ground on a flying saucer, a literal saucer. The plate slams Wario down and through the tea spout. Mario may have gotten what he wished for, but not in the way he wanted. I mean, two on one would have really been helpful here. Bifun gets his power from milk. Homo is his favorite kind. Ah, yes, Homo milk, a very popular brand in these parts, most likely short for homogenized. 
Homo milk gives Bifun super strength. Things begin with a classic pro wrestling hold, the test of strength. Bifun pulls Mario in for a bear hug and comments on how soft Mario's skin feels. Ew. Our hero struggles to get Bifun away, but he can't escape the hold. The Minotaur is an accomplished pro wrestler, so he knows all the right moves. But this match doesn't look like a work anymore. It's crossing over into a shoot. Mario realizes that he is in deep sh This weirdo is too strong to defeat. And unlike Bowser or anyone else he's ever fought, losing the battle is going to be the least painful part of the whole ordeal. The last chance Mario has is the Yoshi helmet. A blast of fire pushes Bifun away. It's not enough. Sure, Mario got out of the hold, but now the boss of Mount Teapot is even more angry than before. He hits Mario with a clothesline. Our hero falls to the ground. The Yoshi helmet falls off and rolls away. Ah oh, no, Mario is about to fall off the mountain. With one hand still hanging on, Bifun moves to kick his opponent off the ledge, winning the match by countout. With one last hope, Mario grabs Bifun's nose ring and pulls. The giant bull falls right over the edge. He lands in a pit of fire, roasting himself. Mario makes his way down the mountain and tells Wario that he took care of the boss and that makes him the new captain of this mission. Well, does that really matter right now? Says Wario. Peach has disappeared. Where is she? The battle was a hard fought and dangerous one. In fact, I'd hate to think of poor Mario having to lose to Bifun. But in all the frou frou, Peach was preparing a nice dinner for after the battle. And while preparing, she walked away. What made her go yonder was the sight of an ice cream stand. Sherbert, directly from Sherbert Island Shore, sure would be nice. At the stand, Peach asks, how much for one? For a pretty girl like you, says Hinyari the penguin, it's on the house. Oh. Thank you so much. With one taste, Peach becomes frozen, turned into a solid block of ice. Just one more to add to the collection, says Hinyari. And wouldn't you know it, he also managed to freeze up Daisy. Uh, I mean, the mermaid. Mario and Wario keep searching for Peach. Clearly, she's not within earshot. Wario takes advantage of this downtime to take some treasure that just happened to be lying around. A nice gold crown. One fit for a king. Now is not the time for that, says Mario. We have to find Peach. Besides, I'm the one who climbed the mountain, and I'm the one who defeated the boss, so that makes me the captain. Therefore, you must follow my lead. A king is higher than a captain, says Wario. Oh, and look, a harp too. Mario just says the heck with him and goes searching for Peach on his own. Maybe things can get done faster that way. The pathway leads to a frozen iceberg. Could the Yoshi helmet melt the whole thing? No. But suddenly, Mario gets a brilliant idea, crafting skis out of asparagus to traverse the ice. Quite the thinker Mario is. The skis give him enough speed to cross over quickly, then dodge traps that have been set by Buckethead, the snowman, to keep out any intruders. The Yoshi helmet clears the way with a fiery blast as Mario smashes through barrier after barrier. Up ahead is a pouncer. He must be related to Thwomp. As we all know, speed is everything to pass by without getting squashed. Unfortunately, our hero doesn't time things out quite right as the pouncer comes down too early, leaving Mario to crash face first. And who else would show up at just the right time but Luigi? The two catch up on what's happened on their separate journeys. While explaining all of that, Gao Gao, 
who Luigi rescued, frees himself from the ropes to reveal that he was one of the brown sugar pirates all along. He throws swords at Luigi, who is quick enough to deflect that attack, then repurpose the swords into ice skates. The pirate escapes and the brothers chase after. The Harisus that live here have set up elaborate traps to guard the area, which Gal Gal activates, then must suffer the wrath of chipmunk porcupines. While the pouncer moves forward to clear the way, friends and foes be danged. Mario blasts fire with the Yoshi helmet as the pouncer rolls over everyone. The helmet was able to bore a small hole in the ice where the Mario brothers were able to hide and survive. Smart thinking. The pouncer doesn't slow down for a minute and finds himself outside and underwater. There's some good treasure left behind, and while the brothers inspect it, the penguin is back, stealthily giving Kuri-chan an ice cream cone. She also gets abducted. The penguin runs to his humble ice museum. Mario and Luigi chase after. Inside, it's cold and pitch black. Mario lights a lamp and sees Peach frozen solid. And it's not just the princess. Other women from all over the world have been frozen and collected here. Even Wendy O. Koopa, meaning Bowser couldn't be behind this. And Birdo is here too? But Birdo is a dude! Well, maybe with his bizarre antics and annoying voice under wraps, that's a good thing. But why? Who would do this? The penguin steps forward. I did this, says he, and I, Hinyari, will collect every beautiful woman in the world. Then no one can ever say no to me again. Are there guys out there like that this weird and desperate? Let's hope not. The battle is on. Hinyori punches Mario's newly found shield so hard that it breaks his hand. The shield goes flying, only to conk Luigi right in the head. Things are not looking good. Hinyori asks Mario, who will fight for you now? Who will save you? Then, a voice is heard. Watch out! Buckethead barrels down the mountain and smashes through everything. Hey, what are you doing? Yells Hinyari as the walls of the humble museum crumble and collapse. Mario lands right in front of Daisy. Uh, I mean the mermaid with a magic pot. Mario reaches inside to find a jet helmet, allowing him to fly. He winds up a super punch that not even the super macho man could pull off sending Hinyari flying off into oblivion. With the ice statues exposed to open sunlight, they all begin to slowly melt. They're all free! Peach hugs Mario and thanks him. You're the best, says Peach. Kuri-chan is free too. Now she can stay with Luigi forever. Everyone is freed from the spell. And like always, whenever someone wakes up from sleep magic, it's always disorienting because time and space have moved on so much, while for the one asleep, only one second has passed by. With Mount Teapot secure, it's off to the next leg of the journey. Stove Canyon is just up ahead, a massive gorge of flame and fire. Heat gushes from every corner, nearly roasting our heroes with each step. The jet helmet helps, propelling everyone past the fire. Traps are set everywhere. The bridge collapses. Brown sugar pirates toss firebombs. Is there no end to this? Luckily, the three discover a rail cart. Now they can just ride on and pass through. That would be nice, except there are several gaps in the track, and the thing is hard to control, moving too fast to stay balanced. Eventually, the cart flies away. Good thing, actually, as the cart rams right into a wall. The shock is so intense, it causes Luigi to vomit. No time for that, Luigi, because a group of DDs are on the attack, hurling boomerangs forward. Mario, with some quick thinking, repels these with the wheel of the busted cart. The boomerangs come flying back, knocking the DDs out cold. They leave some treasure behind. This one looks like a Viking helmet, Peach says. With nowhere left to go, it looks like a dead end. Boiling water from the lake below rises up and reveals the boss of the stove canyon, the devil's head. Hey, is that? It's Wario! 
in the boss's mouth, asleep. How did he wind up there? He spits Wario out on the floor and attacks with a hot magma nasal blast. Literal fireballs shoot out his nose. Mario, powered up from the Viking helmet, catches them barehanded. Dag. The boss strikes again with his tongue, knocking out the ground all around Mario, save for a tiny bit of land to stand on. The giant head turns around, alerted by the sound of Luigi, Wario, Peach, and Kurichan. The boss tongues Peach. Yikes! The distraction buys some time. Wario turns on the water while Mario takes these two fireballs and mashes them together into one super ball, then chucks it right into the boss's mouth. The giant head explodes, perhaps in shame and disgust from having to eat his own boogers, but whether that's true or not, a W is a W. In the space left behind, Mario sees the brown sugar pirate ship, the SS Teacup. The stolen statue can't be too far away. Mario makes no haste in getting everyone out of the cave and onto the ship. Everyone except for Wario, that is. He's left to fend off Ukiwanis by himself. The ship is loaded with pirates, Natch, and the team now has more helmets than they can use. Mario keeps the Viking helmet, Luigi switches off Yoshi with the Dragon helmet, and Peach uses the jet. As the team fights off bad guys, Yoshi cries out to Mario, begging to be used. After all we've been through together, Yoshi pleads. You're just going to abandon me? It's not like that, says Mario. The battle must be won. But not all hope is lost. Kurichan can wear the Yoshi helmet, and does, making the pair a powerful and equal member of the team. Further down the ship, Mario discovers an axe, making it easy to smash through doors and walls. But hey, wait! Better not hack too much, or you're likely to sink the ship. Luigi and Peach grab some piranha plants and also get to chomping. In no time, our heroes find the golden statue, but it's protected by Paidon, a giant spider. Time to gear up for another battle. Oh no, wait, the spider tied them up without warning. Well, with everyone tied up, I guess that's the end of the adventure. Or is it? The only hero not left tied up is Kurichan. She finds a treasure chest with a football inside. An American football. I mean, what other kind of football is there? Kuri breaks through the wall and passes the ball to Mario. He powers up and runs for the end zone. A shovel pass to Luigi, and then Peach takes the action to Paidon, spiking the ball right on his head. The spanking the team puts down makes all the remaining pirates hightail it right out of there. The day is won. With the statue safe, our heroes have a hoedown to celebrate right on the ship. They should have just gotten the statue and left because the escaped pirates summon Bobo, a giant bird, to scoop up the statue and haul it away. Mario and the others chase after, while Bobo sets her newborn chicks out to attack. Now, I'm not going to show it because these birds are too young, but our heroes win out easily, then turn them into fried chicken. I'm hankering for some too, and it's not even Christmas. Bobo drops a bunch of coins and retreats. Now the day is won. All that needs to be done is pick up the statue and go home. Oh, but I guess I spoke too soon again. Guarding the statue now is the leader of the Brown Sugar Pirates, Captain Syrup. She introduces herself and says one thing to our heroes. If you want this statue, you'll have to come to my castle and take it. You know what? This should be pretty easy, says Mario. I mean, the statue is right there, being hauled away. Let's just take it. The team charges forward, but Captain Syrup planned ahead. She sends a giant apple rolling down the hillside. Like a bowling ball, Mario, Luigi, and Peach get knocked right over. The apple is coming right for Kurichan. It's gonna kill her! But let's not forget, apples are Yoshi's favorite food. And even though this one is 100 times his size, the green dinosaur eats it. Way to go. To recharge, our heroes take a bath in a nearby lake. When they're all done, Luigi pulls the plug. Hmm, that's odd. Lakes usually don't work like bathtubs. The water runs out, back to where Wario was, 
left stranded near the pirate ship. The water rises high enough to get him up to the tunnel and lets him catch up to everyone else. Along the way, he finds a scary mask in a treasure chest, which doesn't even scare Mario. There's more important things to deal with anyway. The statue is so close, but the team gets lost in the parsley woods. Yoshi offers to eat his way out. The trees are just too numerous to get the job done, but while chomping away, he discovers a sword, which Mario uses to slash and slash. And in almost no time, the forest gives way to train tracks, with a train on the way. Captain Syrup has loaded the train up with the statue and plans to run over Mario. Everyone tries to outrun the train. Why don't they just jump off to the side? Well, they can't. Trees block the way. The only way out is up. Hold me, Peach! Luigi also grabs on for dear life. Hey, accidental puff puff. Well, get it while you can, any way you can, I say. The jet helmet lifts everyone up in the air, just high enough to survive, landing on the train itself. The captain demands Peach be stopped. Picaricoon, a living cloud, sends down a lightning bolt. The shot misses the mark, cutting the train right in half. At the upcoming switch track, the pieces of the train go off in different directions. Captain Syrup gets away with the statue. As for Mario, Luigi, and Peach, their half crashes into a graveyard, landing right on the grave of Zaniski. The ghost demands payment for the train ride. When Mario says he's broke, Yarikuri Obake, the ghost of defeated pirate gooms, attack. How can ghosts be killed? Thankfully, Wario catches up and his mask is enough to scare the ghosts. Left frozen in place, Wario and the others turn them into makeshift weapons that deflate Zaniski. Another treasure chest is left behind. Inside is a boxing glove. This could come in handy. Luigi gives Wario a knockout punch, sending the bad guy to the top of the trees. Being above the forest, Wario can see exactly where to go. Syrup Castle. That is where the statue is, and where our heroes need to go. So, let's go! Let's bring the statue home. Mario tangles with Captain Syrup, while a certain mermaid is discovered on land. Can Wario be trusted? Will Luigi and Kudichan's love for each other last? What other surprises lay in wait? Next time, Super Mario Land 3, Part 2. We'll see you there. Yeah, Birdo is a dude, at least according to the Super Mario 2 manual where it says he's a boy that thinks he's a girl, and would rather be called Birdetta. So if he wants to be a girl, but everyone still calls this weird purple animal Birdo, a boy's name, isn't that a little, you know?